but his nephew Manny was in charge of all the restaurants and various places like that. However, he was busy at the time, so we arranged to meet with him several days later. And several days later, Manny Gambino disappeared. They found blood in his car, and no one has seen Manny Gambino since that time, as far as I know. In a weapons smuggling bust in 1972, James Miller was arrested with Barry with seven tons of plastic explosive, part of an ongoing and never before revealed CIA plot to overthrow Castro in the 70s. Barry Seal was led by someone that obviously he had a lot of faith in to believe that Cuba was going to be overthrown with the backing of the United States government through the CIA. We were offered support from the uh, Mexican Air Force, uh, from people, we, we flew into an Air Force base in Mexico. We met with some people that had uniforms on, and I have no idea what their rank was supposed to have been, but we met with those people and assured by them that, that we would have their full support if we needed it and wanted it. And then we, of course, returned to the United States and with the understanding we'd have all the support from everybody, including the United States government, through the CIA. And that's not what transpired. Arkansas Governor Bill Clinton has long been suspected of having ties with Barry Seal. Guess what? The suspicions were correct. One of the uh, local DEA agents had told me that Barry had been arrested in Mena, Arkansas. And I ran into Barry a week or two later uh, at a pay telephone, and we were talking, and he said, let me show you something. So he showed me a paper that was, you know, somebody has to sign his bond for him to get out of jail, signed by Bill Clinton, who at that time, I believe, was the attorney general for the state of Arkansas. So then I began to realize that Barry was pretty heavily politically connected. But Clinton is just one of the people with household names associated with Barry. On another occasion, then U.S. Attorney Asa Hutchinson took care of things for Barry. According to the state police official in charge of MENA, the Arkansas State Police didn't even try to develop a case against the MENA drug smuggling because Barry was being protected by U.S. Attorney Hutchinson. When Barry Seal associate Roy Fugler took a company called Netivation public recently, it publishes the U.S. Congress Factbook and has a major internet site for campaign fundraising, the first thing they did was to sign on as their marketing poster boy, guess who? Arkansas Congressman Asa Hutchinson, the man who prevented Seal from being prosecuted while U.S. Attorney for the district in western Arkansas encompassing MENA. Congressman Hutchinson, shown here with a masked friend, is a member of the Speaker's Task Force for a Drug-Free America, whose mandate is to seek out new and more effective approaches to combating the threat of drug use among the nation's youth. He also somehow found the time to present the case to the Senate for the impeachment of Bill Clinton, where he urged the senators in his closing argument to let justice roll down like mighty waters. Were that to happen, we would urge the congressman not to wear his good suit that day because we suspect both he and Clinton might get awfully wet. So here then is the MENA scandal's big dirty secret. Barry Seal was no accident. He didn't just stumble onto MENA, nor did he just happen to luck into his eventual career. Instead, he was a lifelong member of what E. Howard Hunt puckishly refers to as clandestine services. I mean, I sat out here at this airport at the state hangar while the uh, DEA people sat over there watching him modify a Beach 18 right out here on the ramp. And I just asked them, I said, well, why don't you just go get him? And they, one of the guys told me one time there, he said, he's either the slickest operator there ever was or he's working for us. There's former Attorney General Ed Meese, for example. Top IRS investigator Bill Duncan was prevented from testifying to Congress about what he knew about a $400,000 bribe which Barry paid Ed Meese. And then of course there's Oliver North. At this Baton Rouge restaurant, witnesses told us, North was seen with Barry Seal. And one top law enforcement official told us 
that an investigating committee of the U.S. Congress in 1988 heard enough evidence of Norse drug smuggling to send him to jail for the rest of his life. In America, being connected, of course, means never having to say you're sorry. And we like what former CIA pilot and lawyer Gary Idle said to us about North. Going to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than going to a car wash makes you a car. And then there's the King Air 200, like this one, tying Barry Seal to George W. Bush. While Barry Seal's ties to former President Bush have been well known for years, the most talked about event in Seal's life concerns the persistent rumor that Barry had videotaped a hastily aborted DEA cocaine sting in which were caught George Bush's two sons, George W. and Jeb, caught picking up kilos of cocaine at a Florida airport. We have not been able to prove this persistent allegation, but the search for proof turned up something just as shocking. The King Air used in the alleged sting went from being flown in drug smuggling missions by Barry Seal to later becoming the favorite airplane of Texas Governor George W. Bush. As Bogey might have put it, of all the planes in all the world, he had to fly in mine. And the owners of the King Air in between Barry and George W. Bush all had ties to the Bush family and were involved in some of the most notorious and unpunished financial frauds of the 1980s. And this one King Air reveals like nothing else we've seen the bipartisan nature of this scandal. We discovered a note in Barry Seal's own handwriting revealing that the man who originally gave this plane to Seal was a close associate of Charles Manat, the national chairman during the early 80s of the Democratic Party. We remembered a curious incident from the 1984 Democratic Convention when Walter Mondale, the party's presidential nominee, was prevented from choosing his own man as party chairman, the presidential candidate's traditional prerogative. They wouldn't let him replace Charles Manat. When the Democratic Convention was called to order this afternoon, the gavel was in the hands of Democratic National Committee Chairman Charles Manat. As party chairman, the job of calling the convention to order was rightfully his. As Sandra Van Oka reports, over the weekend, the job very nearly went to someone else. The formalities began smoothly enough. But behind the facade, there was discord. The result of Walter Mondale's attempt this weekend to dump Californian Charles Manat as National Party Chairman and replace him with Georgia State Chairman Burt Lance. When reaction from party leaders was so fiercely negative, Mondale backed off. Could Manat have been just too good a fundraiser to be replaced? Oil companies, we've learned, make excellent drug money laundering vehicles. Sources told us that this man, Democratic power broker Richard Benveniste, had incorporated a Trinity Oil or Trinity Energy to launder money for his client, Barry Seal. This gray-haired lawyer is the same man who defended Bill Clinton on the Whitewater Committee, the same committee which was haunted by the ghost of Barry Seal, according to the Wall Street Journal. We discovered that back in the early 80s, he represented both Barry Seal and Bill Clinton. We found an oil company called Trinity Energy that was sold by Barry's partner, attorney Michael Roy Fugler, for $22 million to a shadowy company suspected of being controlled by none other than Arkansas kingpin Jackson Stevens. We also traced the Trinity Energy, a Delaware-listed company, to the phone number of a company formed by former Pentagon officials called ICF Kaiser International, whose chairman, a man who had sat on its board for over nine years, was former Congressman Tony Coelho, who resigned from Congress rather than face an ethics probe. Congressional Democrats awoke to even more unexpected headlines today. The number three man in the House leadership, California Congressman Tony Coelho, has also decided to quit. Deborah Potter has our report. It was a stunning surprise. The number three Democrat in the House, Tony Coelho, calling it quits rather than face a protracted investigation of his financial dealings. Today, Tony Coelho was the head of Al Gore's presidential campaign. Why would Gore put someone so tainted in so visible a position? Maybe Coelho's good at fundraising, too. Just how deep does this scandal go?